Hello, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. In this video, we discuss the basics of linear regression, which is simple but powerful technique for analyzing data sets. So if you want to know how you can use scikit-learn in Python to find this green line that explains these collected samples, please continue watching. Regression is used to quantify the relationship between two or more variables. We know that we have two types of variables. We have independent variables and dependent variables. So let's say that x is an independent variable which can be viewed as an input to a function. And then the dependent variable or the output is related to x through some function. So here we simply multiply x by 2 and then we add 3 to find the output or the dependent variable. In regression problems, we don't have access to this function, but instead we have access to observed values. So meaning that for n different values of x, we have access to the corresponding output values. And this will contain the training data set, meaning that we have these input output pairs, which we show here by x1, y1, x2, y2, xn, yn. And the goal here is to infer the underlying function using these observations in the training data set. And when we find this function, then we can use that to predict output values or dependent variables for new inputs or independent variables which we show here by x new. And this will be our testing part, which is very critical for machine learning and data science methods. In this video, we are going to use Google Collaboratory, or Google Cloud for short, which allows you to write and execute Python codes in your browser. So this means that you don't have to install Python on your own machine, Plus, you will have free access to computing resources such as CPUs and GPUs. Google Cloud works very much similar to Google Doc. And you can either go to your Google Drive, or you can use this link and go to collab.research.google.com. And you will see more instruction on how to use Google Cloud. Here, for example, I went to Google Cloud and I just type print Dr. Data Science which means that now we have a working Python environment. You may say that linear regression is easy because you can pick two data points and draw a line that will go through those two selected data points. Now let's create an example to see how this works. We are going to import NumPy as NP, and you can think of NumPy as a Python library for computing and working with arrays, arrays of numbers. And then we're also going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, which we will use for data visualization and plotting functions. So here, the independent variable is x, and we are going to use np.random.rand to create 20 random numbers that are uniformly distributed from 0 to 1. So we're going to multiply this by 3 so that now our independent variable x uh, is distributed from 0 to 3. So that's the x-axis on the figure that we see on the right. And then for the dependent variable y, we are going to have the same equation as you saw previously. 2 times x plus 3. So we obviously can plot these 20 data points, and then here we are using plt.xlabel and ylabel so that we can uh, have names for these axes. And obviously right now you can pick two data points and draw a line, and this line will clearly go through all data points, which gives you this red line. And now if you want to predict the output value, for a new independent variable, let's say for x equals 2.5, you can see the corresponding value on the line from the y-axis 
which would be 8. And obviously, this makes sense because we have this equation that y equals 2 times x plus 3. So if x is 2.5, then y is equal to 8. So let's say in this example, we wanted to quantify the relationship between salary and experience level for employees in your company. So then x corresponds to experience level and y relates to salary of each employee. And in this case, we have 20 employees that we have their information. So one issue here is that these employees may not exactly uh, give us this information about their salaries. So this is something that we can call as noisy observations. So in order to see the difference between this case and the previous example, we have the same independent variables x, but then for the dependent variable y, we have 2 times x plus 3 plus some noise value. And this noise is coming from a Gaussian distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. So if you want to see the difference, you see that here we have np.random.randn. So that means that this is a normal or Gaussian distribution. So now the problem becomes difficult because we can pick two data points, but in each case, the line that we draw that will go through those two points will be different. Therefore, the linear regression problem amounts to finding the best line that will describe the entire data set. So right now, in order to understand linear regression and how it works, let's say that we know that the underlying function is linear. So in some simple terms, this means that we have the equation of a line, which is simply theta 0 plus theta 1 x. And theta 0 and theta 1 are two parameters. And we know from calculus that theta 0 is called intercept and theta 1 is the slope of this line. And the goal here is that to choose the parameters theta 0 and theta 1 such that predicted values, which are these f of xi, are as close as possible to the actual values, which are y1 to yn. And remember that y1 to yn are given in our training data set that we discussed earlier. So now the next question is to define a cost or loss function, which measures how close these actual values and predicted values are. The simple way to do this is by subtracting actual values by predicted values and take this difference to the power of 2. So now we know that all these differences are positive and then take the average of these error values. And now we have an optimization problem which we have to find values for theta 0 and theta 1 which will lead to the minimum value of this cost function or loss function. So now let's make one more assumption that the intercept term theta 0 is always equal to 0 and this means that the function that we are trying to infer has only one parameter which is theta 1 or a slope of the line. And here, obviously, if we set x equals to 0, then f of x is also equal to 0, which means that this is a line that will go through the origin, which is 0 and 0. So let's revisit our cost function. And we see that now we have inside the parentheses yi minus predicted values, which they are theta 1 times xi. So now, because we have only one parameter, we know from calculus that we can find the derivative of this function with respect to theta 1 and set that derivative equal to 0 to find the optimal value. In order to find the derivative of this function, 
we can use chain rule. So let's call the term inside the parentheses yi minus theta 1 xi as zi or some other variable. So in this case, we know that zi to the power of 2, its derivative is 2 times zi. And then we have to take the derivative of zi with respect to theta 1, which this means that we get negative xi. So it's a simple chain rule that we can use to find the derivative of this function with respect to theta 1. And then we set this derivative equal to 0. And remember that theta 1 doesn't have any dependence on the variable i. So that's why we can simplify this and solve this problem, which gives us theta 1 is equal to summation of xi yi divided by the summation of xi squared. Next, we can form two one-dimensional arrays, one containing different values of x1 to xn, and then the other one-dimensional array will contain the output values y1 to yn. And then in the numerator of theta1, we will have the inner product or dot product between inputs and outputs, and then in the denominator, we will have the inner product between inputs and inputs. So in this way, we can simply find the value of theta1. So now let's look at another example in Google Cloud. So here we are going to have, again, independent variables that are distributed from 0 to 3. And then the relationship between input and output is determined by this equation y equals 2 times x. So remember that we set the intercept term equal to 0. We will also add the noise term to make sure that solving this problem is not trivial. Next, we are going to find theta 1 that we just found in the previous slide. In the numerator, we have the inner product between x and y. And mp dot dot finds the inner product between one-dimensional arrays. That's why we are using dot ravel to make sure that these arrays x and y are one dimensional. Next we will pick the first point and the last point on the x axis. So these are x min and x max and we multiply them by theta 1 which will give us the, uh, the predicted output. And this is because in the previous slide we assume that f of x is equal to theta 1 times x. So now if you want to find predicted salary for a new employee with experience level of 2.5, you can use this red line to make this prediction. As I promised you, we are going to use scikit-learn to solve this regression problem. Scikit-learn is a Python library that has a lot of simple and efficient tools for data science. And you can go to scikit-learn.org to learn more about available functions that you can use. In this video, we are going to use linear regression, which is part of scikit-learn's linear models. So this is scikit-learn.linear underscore model. That from that, we import linear regression. Next step is to initialize the linear regression model. If you look at the documentation, fit underscore intercept, which is the term theta zero in our case, is by default true, meaning that linear regression model tries to find the optimal value of theta zero. But in this simple case, we assume that the intercept term is always equal to zero. Therefore, we are going to set fit underscore intercept equal to false so that we only find theta 1. The next step is to use dot fit which will do the training part which means that we are going to find theta 1. And in order to find the exact value of theta 1 
you can use your linear regression model and then dot coef, which means that you want to find the coefficient, and this will give you theta 1. After computing theta 1, very similar to the previous slide, you're going to pick two points on the x-axis, x min and x max, and we multiply them by theta 1 to find the corresponding y values. And then this green line is the line that will go through those two points. And this is exactly identical to what we found in the previous slide. So this means that now you understand how scikit-learn solves linear regression problems. Now let's revisit the original problem that we had, where independent variables are distributed from 0 to 3, and the dependent variable or output is related to the input via this equation, which is 2 times x plus 3 plus some noise value. Similar to the previous slide, you can use sklearn the linear underscore model to import linear regression. And remember, now because we want to find both intercept and the slope, we have to set fit underscore intercept to be true. And then we are going to use dot fit to do training. So now we find both theta 0 and theta 1. And theta 0, as we said, is the intercept. So that's why we use the linear regression model dot intercept. And theta 1 is the coefficient. So that's why we use linear regression model dot coef. And now we have, again, two points on the x-axis, x min and x max. And we multiply them by theta 1, or the coefficient, and then we add theta 0. Therefore, in this problem, we successfully extract the relationship between the output variable and the input variable using scikit-learn. In future videos, we will talk about situations when we have more than one input variable. In fact, in many real-world problems, we will have several input variables. And an interesting problem is to identify the relationship between the desired output variable and these input variables. We will also talk about using nonlinear functions for quantifying relationships. In many real-world problems, the underlying structure is more complex than a simple linear function. Therefore, we will talk about polynomial regression and also neural networks or deep learning to extract more complex structures. Another important topic that we will cover is to quantify the quality of predictions using different metrics. This is very important when we are working with data sets that have more than one input variable because we cannot just simply visualize the data set. And also another topic that we will cover is to how to avoid overfitting using regularization techniques in the context of regression. If you want to know more about these topics, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.